This is the tale of The Doll's House by Ruma Godden, with illustrations by Jane Ray, read by Sasha Cooper. On behalf of Quarantine Kids Storytime, we would just like to say a huge thank you to the Ruma Godden Literary Trust and Jane Murray Flutter, Ruma Godden's daughter, for granting us permission to read The Doll's House. If you'd like to know more information about Ruma Godden's works, you can visit the Literary Trust's website, www.rumagodden.com. I will also put this link down in the description box for you. Thank you once again for tuning in. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the adventures that Totty and her friends have. Enjoy. Chapter One This is a novel written about dolls in a doll's house. The chief person in it is Totty Plantagenet, a small Dutch doll. Dutch dolls are scarce now, but Totty was made a long time ago when they were plentiful and sold in every shop that had toys for sale, and large ones cost a penny, the middle size a halfpenny, and very small ones like Totty were sold for a farthing each. At present, she lived in the nursery of two little girls called Emily and Charlotte Dane. I say at present, because Totty had lived a long while. Once she had lived with two other little girls, who were Emily and Charlotte's great-grandmother and their great-great-aunt, Laura. How strange that a little farthing doll should last so long. Totty was made of wood, and it was good wood. She liked to think sometimes of the tree whose wood she was made of, of its strength, and of the sap that ran through it and made it bud and put out leaves every spring and summer that kept it standing through the winter storms and wind. A little, a very little of that tree is in me, said Totty. I am a little of that tree. She liked to think of it. She was made of that wood, neatly jointed at the hips and shoulders and sockets, she had sockets for elbows and knees, with a sturdy, inch-wide yoke for shoulders, and a round little head with glossy painted hair. She had glossy painted cheeks, and her eyes were painted with bright, firm paint, blue, and very determined. Emily and Charlotte had chosen two other dolls to be Totty's father and mother. Their names were Mr. Plantagenet, and Mrs. Plantagenet. But Mrs. Plantagenet had another name, and that was Birdie. Of course, Totty knew, just as you and I know, that Mr. and Mrs. Plantagenet were not her real father and mother, that she had no real father and mother, unless it were of that felled tree of whose wood she was made. She knew that, just as she knew that her little brother, Apple, the doll they had given her for a little brother was made from plush, which is a kind of velvet, and Dana, the doll's house dog, had a backbone made from a darning needle. If you have ever played at fathers and mothers, and of course you have played at fathers and mothers, you will remember what a very good feeling it is. That was exactly the feeling between Totty and Mr. and Mrs. Plantagenet, Birdie, and little brother Apple, and Dana the dog. It is an anxious, sometimes a dangerous thing to be a doll. Dolls cannot choose. They can only be chosen. They cannot do. They can only be done by. Children who do not understand this often do wrong things, and then the dolls are hurt and abused and lost. And when this happens, Dolls cannot speak, nor do anything except be hurt and abused and lost. If you have any dolls, you should remember that. Listen to the story of Mr. Plantagenet before he was Mr. Plantagenet. For a long while he was hurt and abused and lost. He was a delicate little doll, rather larger than Totty, with a china face and brown glass eyes and real brown hair. He was a boy doll. 
and he always said he remembered once being dressed in a kilt as a Highlander, with toy bagpipes stuck to his hand with hard, painful glue. Painful when you tried to get it off. He was bought for some children. Not, I am glad to say, Emily and Charlotte. Quite other children, who took no care of him at all. It was they who dragged the bagpipes off, and took some of the painted skin off the palm as well, and tore his clothes off too, and let their puppy bite his foot until it looked half nibbled. One of the boys drew a moustache on his little top lip with indelible pencil. Indelible means it can never come off. Then they threw him into the cold, dark toy cupboard, where he lay for weeks and months, and might have lain for years if they had not been ordered to tidy the toy cupboard because children were coming to tea. As it was, they left him lying on the floor under the table, and Emily, who was one of the visitors, nearly trod on him. Oh, I am sorry, said Emily, but nobody seemed to think it mattered. What a dear little doll, said Emily, picking him up. Who is he? Whom does he belong to? He did not seem to belong to anyone. She noticed that his eyes were filled with dust. The children said Emily could have him, and she wrapped him up in her handkerchief and took him home. She and Charlotte saw at once that he was made to be a little man-doll. They sponged the dust and glue off him with hot water and dried him carefully, and though the moustache would not come off, they knitted him a sock for his spoilt foot and put a plaster on the palm of his hurt hand, and their mother made him a check flannel suit and a blue shirt and a tie of red silk ribbon. Emily cut him tiny newspapers out of the real ones to read. I like him with a moustache, said Emily. It makes him look more like Mr. Plantagenet, said Charlotte. He could still not quite believe he was Mr. Plantagenet. He was still easily made afraid, afraid of being hurt or abused again. Really, you might have thought that Totty was the father, and he was the child. But there are real fathers like that. Mrs. Plantagenet was not quite right in the head. There was something in her head that rattled. Charlotte thought it might be beads. And it was true that the something made a gay sound like bright beads touching together. She was altogether gay and light, being made of cheap celluloid, but all the same, nicely moulded and jointed and painted. She came to Charlotte on a cracker at a party. Yes, Mrs. Plantagenet started life as part of a cracker, to which she was fastened by silver tinsel. She had been dressed in blue and green feathers. At first, they had not thought she was anything more but that part of the cracker. First, Charlotte kept her on the cracker, then off the cracker. Then one day, she decided to dress her and pulled the feathers off. The feathers were glued on Mrs. Plantagenet, and here was her difference from Mr. Plantagenet. The glue coming off did not hurt her at all. It came off easily with hot water, leaving not a trace, and her body only gave out a warm celluloid smell and turned even more pink. There is something brave about this doll, said Emily. I don't usually like celluloid dolls. Nor do I, said Charlotte, but I like her. Emily made Mrs. Plantagenet a red skirt with blue rick-rack braid on the hem a blue blouse with red spots. The spots were pin spots, but they looked large as buttons to Mrs. Plantagenet. I think she likes them large and bright, said Emily. They sewed her hair, which was fluffy yellow cotton, into a bun. But Emily thought again, and let the hair out of the bun, loose and fly away. I think she was wishing we could let it fly away like that, said Charlotte. I think she likes her hair. They put her next to Mr. Plantagenet, and they seemed to suit one another at once. They seemed to suit Totty, too. 
Totty had on a little apron that was embroidered with red daisies. Both Mr. and Mrs. Plantagenet thought she looked the very pattern of a nice small wooden girl. They were to think even more of her later. "'We must get Mr. Plantagenet a walking stick,' said Emily. "'And Mrs. Plantagenet must have a hat with a tiny feather.' There was still something of the cracker and feather look about Mrs. Plantagenet, as there was still something of the dark toy cupboard about Mr. Plantagenet. "'But Totty has been ours always,' said Emily. "'Even before always,' said Charlotte. "'As for Apple, there were no fears for him. "'Come fog, come fine. "'No one could be unkind to Apple. "'He was as big as Emily's thumb, plump, "'and made of warm plush, coloured pink-brown. "'He felt nice, and he was nice.' with chunky little arms and legs and sewn-in dimples and a wig of brown darning wool hair. Perhaps it was the darning wood that made Darner so fond of him. Apple wore a buster suit, scarlet felt trousers and a white cambric blouse, white socks and red felt shoes that were fastened with the smallest of smallest pearl buttons you can ever imagine. No one ever saw Apple without exclaiming, What a little love of a doll! Totty and Mr. Plantagenet felt that too, though they knew how naughty he was. Birdie, Mrs. Plantagenet, felt it, but she did not know that he was ever naughty. She only loved him. You had to be very careful how you touched Darna, because he had a prick at his head end. It was his darning needle backbone and it made him difficult to handle. The rest of him was clipped wool, gone a little grey with London grime, over pipe-cleaner legs. Emily and Charlotte used to take him in his turn as they took the rest of the family to the park, where he liked to be stood in the shelter of a fallen leaf. <laughs> if they were autumn and there were fallen leaves, so that he could bristle at other real-life dogs. He also liked staying at home. That was the trouble. There was no home. Thank you all for watching this first chapter. Tune in tomorrow to see the adventures continue for Totty and her family. I've been Sasha Cooper, and this has been The Doll's House by Rumor Godden. Take care, everybody, and stay safe. Bye-bye.